It is now time for a member statement. I recognize the member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to remind this government that health care in Niagara is in crisis. Decades of underfunding, cuts, and inaction have left our local hospitals on the brink of collapse. Seniors waiting in hospital hallways for medical care. This week, Dr. Herji, our acting chief medical officer of health, raised alarm bells. 19 patients have died this month in Niagara. Niagara Health has eight COVID outbreaks in Niagara hospitals. 80 patients with COVID are being treated in hospitals, with six in intensive care. 283 hospital workers and doctors were in isolation after exposure to COVID. Niagara Health has again had to delay surgeries because of COVID outbreaks and staffing shortages. We need beds in our hospitals that are fully staffed. Bill 124 must be repealed immediately so we can attract and retain more nurses. I fought alongside the residents to have Fort Erie Urgent Care reopened. We were successful in that fight, but the people of Fort Erie need to know that their urgent care center will not be taken away from them again. We need shovels in the ground in the new Niagara Falls Hospital. Start the build now with local workers, local engineers, local businesses. My constituents have waited too long and fought too hard for the health care they need and deserve. Meanwhile, the Premier said this week that he's shutting down the legislation early legislation early because he doesn't want to ruin cottage season. Speaker, it's time for a government to prioritize the well-being of all Ontarians, not just their own, and take care of the people in Niagara. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member's statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I had the opportunity to visit the Mississauga Hospital, where early work is already underway on a multi-billion dollar project to build the largest and most advanced hospital in Canadian history. It should have been built 15 years ago, but we are getting it done. I also joined Town Hall on the on the construction of 632 new modern long-term care beds on Speakman Drive. Speaker, that's more beds than the Liberals built for the entire province. This government is getting it done. On Tuesday, I joined the Minister of Transportation to see the first piece of track installed in the new $4.6 billion Hazel McCallion LRT that begins right here in Port Credit. It will link up to the new $56 million bus rapid transit corridor along Lakeshore. We are getting it done. Yesterday, I visited the construction site of a $314 million project in the improvement of the QEW. There were installed uh, con uh, concrete slabs for a new bridge across Mississauga Road. And, Speaker, they were installed right side up. Yesterday, I also announced $1.4 million in grants to 15 local nonprofits through the Resilience Community Fund. And later today, Speaker, we will be cutting a ribbon at the Lakeshore Lofts with 68 supportive, affordable housing units for seniors and people living with disabilities. I want to thank this Premier and all our great ministers for the work on these projects. Together, we are getting it done for the people of Mississauga Lakeshore and Ontario. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to thank the people of Windsor West for trusting me as their MPP for the last eight years. It has been an honour to represent the people of Windsor West and to fight for our community. We have accomplished so much together. We've recently celebrated the announcement of the first electric vehicle battery plant being built in Windsor, the first in all of Canada. We've successfully worked across party lines to secure the funding for our new hospital. We were successful in ensuring that palliative patients across Canada can move back to Ontario and receive the end-of-life care that they need while surrounded by their loved ones, a bill that was imagined and developed from the experience of Windsorites. We tabled legislation to guarantee access to essential caregivers for residents in long-term care homes, hospitals, supportive housing and more during the pandemic, a bill that began changes in Ontario and around the world. We rallied outside of Queen's Park for better, more timely autism services and supports for people with disabilities. We held a successful community pop-up vaccine clinic with the help of Dr. Doko and many local organizations, including the Windsor Chamber of Commerce. Alongside small business owners in my community, we stood up to this Conservative government and called out their inadequate support programs during the lockdowns and again during the six-day blockade that shut down the Ambassador Bridge. 
Speaker, I thank the members from Essex and Windsor to Cumsey for their friendship, mentorship, and community service. I wish them all the best in their new adventures. Lastly, thank you to my staff for their hard work and dedication to helping our constituents. I am so proud of our accomplishments and cannot wait to continue to fight for my community. The member for Markham Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have a great news for our seniors of Ontario. Our government is investing $1 billion more over the next three years to further expand home care. This funding will benefit nearly 700,000 families who rely on the home care annually, preventing unnecessary hospital and long-term care admission and shortening the hospital delays. This includes many Markham Thornhill residents who will receive the care they need in the comfort of their own home. Mr. Speaker, my mother passed away. She was in the home care for many years. She passed away the last year. Mr. Speaker, 2021 national census show seniors over the age of 85 make up one of the country's fastest growing demography. The population of that age group is expected to triple over the next 25 years. Our government has been very conscious about this growing demography. And we are also making investment in 30,000 new and 28,000 upgraded long-term care beds to accommodate our fastest growing seniors population. Mr. Speaker, over 600 beds coming to Markham alone, which include more beds at the Mongsong Seniors Care Campus. We want to guarantee that anyone who move into the long-term care homes to get quality of care and access to treatment that they deserve. That's why we are also hiring 27,000 long-term care staff to ensure every senior receive a minimum of four hours of care per day. Mr. Speaker, the previous government only built 611 new beds during their two terms in all of Ontario. We are building more beds in Markham alone than the Liberal did across the all of Ontario during their two terms. I'm very proud that our government continues to be committed to support our seniors. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, Member for London North Centre. Speaker, I'm honoured today to rise to recognize London's designation as a UNESCO World City of Music, the first in Canada. London has long been known for its gorgeous neighbourhoods, historic streetscapes, exceptional educational institutions, world-class healthcare and research, and is now recognized for its vibrant arts culture and second-to-none venues. I have spoken in this chamber and to ministers opposite about our burgeoning digital creative sector, brilliant innovations, concierge service with the London Film Office, world-class Forest City Film Festival, as well as the Palace Theatre, the Fringe Festival, and all the great happenings here in London. I recently met with the amazing folks at the London Arts Council, and we discussed how the arts distinguish us from all other species. The arts are among the highest forms of expression, the link with mental health, social cohesion, civic pride, neighborhood identity, and a robust economic driver. The arts are vital. There are so many great organizations in London, such as TAP Center for Creativity, Beal Art, AK Arts Academy, Rock the Park, Museum London, venues such as the Grand Theatre, many thanks to Deb Harvey for the amazing renovation, Aeolian Hall, London Music Hall, Budweiser Gardens, Centennial Hall, RBC Place, and so many more. I look forward to all the great things happening in London. Many thanks to Kapil Lakodia of LEDC and London Chamber of Commerce's Graham Henderson for your strong leadership in Ontario's fastest growing city, the Forest City. It's an honour and an absolute privilege to represent London. With this UNESCO designation as a world city of music, it further underscores that London is the place to be. London is a place to invest, and London is a place to grow. Thank you. Thank you, Member Statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, Larga Baffin has been part of our community for many years. They do incredible work to support individuals and families who must travel thousands of miles to get urgent and life-saving care at our local hospitals like CHEO and the General. You know, Speaker, Ottawa is very fortunate to have world-class health care right here in our community, and sharing that health care with our neighbours to the north is the right thing to do. Travelling a long distance to a place that is very different from where you came from can be scary. It can create a lot of anxiety. Welcoming families from Nunavut at a difficult time in their lives is about the kind of community we all want for each other. 
I offer my full support to Larger Baffin as they seek to build a safe and modern place in Ottawa South for the families that they serve. And I strongly urge local city councillor Diane Deans and all of city council to adopt a collaborative and cooperative approach to this very important project. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm always aware of what a great privilege it is have a platform to elevate the concerns of my constituents. Speaker, the pandemic has been hard on everyone, but it has presented additional challenges for many people of Asian heritage who experience anti-Asian racism, which is also known as the shadow pandemic, just like the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaker, anti-Asian racism hurt people and causes them to feel isolated and afraid. Speaker, to address this issue, I have initiated a social media awareness campaign. I have emailed all Ontario MPPs, MPs, Canadian senators, and the municipal leaders in the GTA to ask for your and their support for this important non-put Nonpartisan efforts. Speaker, my private member's bill, Anti Asian Racism Education Month Act, will be put into action during the month of May. Please help me to promote the positive attributes and contributions of the Asian community to counteract harmful anti Asian sentiment and racism in our communities. Together, we can rise above hate. Speaker, let's stop, think, feel, and then act in a collective effort to cultivate love through education to end discrimination. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Next, we have the member for Hamilton West, and Castor Dundas. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today with a deep sense of gratitude to the wonderful people in my riding of Hamilton West and Castor Dundas. It is an honour and a privilege to represent you here in this House. I also um, would like to say that amongst us, it's no secret that we don't often agree here. But I know that there's one thing that we can all agree on, and that's that we wouldn't be able to do this work. We wouldn't be able to be here without the love and the support of our family and friends. And we all know that this work takes us away from them so often. And that's why it's actually a delight to see a beautiful new baby joining us here in the legislature uh, this morning. And that's why I'm happy to share that I am also so blessed to have such a wonderful family and friends, and I want to thank you deeply from the bottom of my heart. I also would like to thank my partner in life, my rock, who's joining us here today. Thank you, Ted, for being there every day for me. And I, I'd just like to thank you for helping me find my glasses almost every day for the last four years. That was a really, really big help. To Thompson and Madeline, you are my heart. And to my wonderful grandchildren, to Noah, to Emmett and Sully to Sloan and to baby May, to Hawksley and Levon. Hawk, thank you for lending Nan this beautiful pin to wear here today, and to your beautiful brand new baby brother, Sam. Nan misses all of you so much when I'm away, but that's why I'm here doing this work. That's why all of us are here doing this work. We're here fighting for a brighter, greener, better Ontario for all of the children, for all of the grandchildren, for all of the generations to come. We are committed to this work, and I thank you so much for your support and your love. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member for Oakville. Thank you. Good morning, Speaker. It's an honour to rise here in the Legislature as the 42nd Parliament is coming to an end. And I want to bring attention to some local and provincial accomplishments. Over the last four years, the government has supported Oakville by saving Glen Abbey by expanding the Greenbelt with an additional 120 acres into the 14 Mile Creek, investing in Ford Canada's Oakville Assembly Plant, building 640 long-term care beds, investing record amounts in local schools and childcare spaces, 
We've also made significant progress in the province during these past four years. We've introduced animal welfare legislation that introduced the toughest fines in Canada for animal abuse. We've cut the small business tax rate. We've committed to the largest subway expansion in the province's history. We've cut post-secondary tuition by 10 percent. We are providing the largest investment of $30 billion for hospital in infrastructure. We've made it easier for foreign professionals to start working in Ontario. We're making life more affordable by eliminating renewal fees for drivers and providing tax credits for seniors who want to stay in their homes longer. We're connecting every part of Ontario with the largest investment in broadband in our history. We've updated the school curriculum to teach skills for today's job market. We are reducing gas prices by 10 cents a litre. We're building 30,000 more long-term care beds, and we're providing a tax reduction to low-income earners. Speaker, our government is getting it done and ensuring Ontario is the best jurisdiction to work, live, and raise a family. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Barrie Innisfil. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise. I rise today to, uh, to remind the Legislature and all Ontarians and Canadians about Yom HaShomah, the Jewish Holocaust Remembrance Day. It's a day to observe the memory of the six million Jews who were murdered by the Holocaust and to never forget the great lessons of the Holocaust so we may never repeat these atrocities. Unfortunately, around the world there's still misinformation and Holocaust denial, which is why it's so important that this government made a pivotal step to improve our education system to make sure that students who are learning today understand the atrocities of the Holocaust, so we may never repeat this again and, these, and, and the history. And I'm really thankful to the friends of the Simon Wiesenthal Centre who is working with our government on this uh, particular plan in our education system. Unfortunately, Speaker, the statistics are increasing in terms of the crimes that are occurring around anti-Semitism. I see it in my community of Barrie Innisfil, and we see it all across Ontario. That's why it's upon all of us in this legislature to ensure that we, we celebrate um, the, the good over and the triumph of good over evil, and remember that Yom HaShomah is a day that we all need to commemorate to ensure that this never happens again, and that next generations can freely uh, be able to celebrate their religion, whatever it is, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Sikh. It's incredible that in our country, in our nation, that we can celebrate our religions freely without persecution. And so with that, Speaker, I, uh, I, I'd like to uh, ask everyone in the legislature uh, to commemorate this year Yom HaShomah and look at events around their community so that this never happens again. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning. The 